Good morning. I'm Judge Amy Carter. This is courtroom one, session one. Could I have the attorneys place their appearances on the record, please? Coffee Kennedy Swanson on behalf of the Office of State Attorney. Lakeisha Halen, Office of State. Office Office of the Public Defender. <laughs> Letitia follow with Office of Public Defender. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Hey, Mr. Murphy. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Murphy, you're here for an out-of-county warrant from Seminole County. It looks like you failed to appear for an arraignment for the offenses of driving while license suspended or ex an expired tag of more than six months. There's no bond on the warrant, sir. Seminole County is going to come pick you up, and you'll see a judge when you get to first appearance there, sir. Okay. Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Okay. Good morning, your name? Christopher Cooks. Mr. Cooks, you are here, sir, in um, 19 CF 14078, you are arrested for possession of synthetic cannabis. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you, sir. Uh, your bond is $1,000. I'm not going to take any action on your out on bond case. Thank you. Ma'am, good morning. Good morning. Your name? Lois LaFrance. Ms. LaFrance, you are here in case number 19MM8183. You were arrested for trespass on property after warning. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Was there an offer for Ms. LaFrance? I haven't spoken to any lawyer yet. Okay, the lawyer that I've appointed to represent you, ma'am, is standing right next to you. Yeah, I'm but nobody let me speak to her. So I'd like to talk to her. Okay. I'm disabled. Okay. All right, um, Ms. LaFrance, we'll go ahead then and we'll reset your case for this afternoon and you can talk to your lawyer over lunch and we'll see you the Thank you, I'd later. like a chance to tell her what's going on. Okay. Here we go. No problem, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning. Your name? Mr. James, you're here in 19 CF 14103. You actually have several cases this morning. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you, sir, on all of the cases. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in this case, your bond is $500. You're not to return to the Liquor Plaza at 8739 <coughs> International Drive. You have 19 CF 13331. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for a petty theft with two prior convictions. Your bond in that matter, sir, is going to be $500. You're not to have any contact with ABC. I'm sorry, you're not to return to the ABC Wine and Spirits or have any contact with any of the witnesses in that matter. 
You have 19 CF 12962. You were arrested for retail theft greater than $300. Your bond is going to be $1,000 in that case. You're not to return to the Goodies Grocery Liquor Store at 12521 State Road 535. And then you have 19 CF 12594. Again, you arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for petty theft with two prior convictions. Your bond is $500. You're not to return to any ABC liquor store. And then finally, you have 19MM8219, petty theft with a prior conviction. Your bond is $500. You're not to return to the Walmart at 2500 South Kirkman Road. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Uh, we'll reset, Mr. Fountain. Morning. Can I get out of the thing where I'm so serious so I can tell you a little something like? Well, Mr. Frederick, just give me a second, okay, and we'll talk about it. Hmm? So just give me a second and we'll talk about it, okay? okay. How are you this morning? All right. All right. Sir. I don't feel I was unfairly, uh, our police don't let me know. Committed to uh, sitting in store, paid for my expenses like for paper and stuff on um, all buildings, city level, the stores up for rent though. But I believe the only written material came in the store yesterday. That allowed was already a mother of another year and didn't get arrested then was straight. You know, right, I Mr. hadn't Frederick. done it like that. Okay, Mr. Right. Frederick, you wanted to leave today, right? Yeah. Okay. So I heard you everything. please like the old property know I got um what I say, um, re re what I say, uh, reputation, right? Okay, but Mr. Frederick, you have to let me talk. Okay, okay. okay. You want me to try to help Let's you today? Try you something to pretty sick, you know? Okay. Okay. The real talk, yeah. They all can help me out, because I know all y'all got residents, you know? That's right. Mm. Please stop talking, or I'm not going to be able to help you this morning. Okay, I'll stop. Okay, all right. <clears throat> So, Mr. Frederick, if you want to resolve your cases this morning, you, you have to listen to me. You cannot go back to the Dollar General on Ivy Lane. Do you understand? Okay, me? okay. I just feel peaceful. Yeah, keep out of the way from them because I ain't damn Don't go back there. All right, okay, please. All right, Mr. Frederick, can you sign a plea form, please? A plea form? Yeah, that's the yellow seat, right? Well, it's white, and you were hmm? given it in the back. Yeah, Oh, this is the one here. The oh, I stand. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Frederick, you plead no contest today, sir? Yeah, no way, yeah, I okay. pull one away. All right, I'm gonna accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail. You have credit for two days time served. Okay. You're also gonna have to pay court costs, Mr. Frederick, which are due by October 8th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal. You also oh, cannot, that's Mr. Frederick, Mr. Frederick, that's listen, Mr. Enough. Frederick, look at me. You cannot go back to the dollar. The yeah, I'll, be, I'll give y'all my word. I'll you know, stay safe for y'all. Okay. You know. right. Bring things around for y'all residents. Thank you, sure. Mr. Frederick. Okay, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going back this way. Yeah, the lady. Thank you, Mr. Steve, do you know if um, on Montenegro's case, if the petty theft has been filed on? Yes. It has? Do you think we could potentially resolve both of those today? If they uploaded restitution and confiscation, so I'll look right now. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Your name? Uh, Jonathan Montenegro. Mr. Montenegro, you were here in 19MM8221. You were arrested for trespass on property after warning. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender 
to represent you, sir. Was there an offer for Mr. Montenegro? I mean, yes, previously there was an offer of adjudication credit for time served, no return on the trespass. Okay, and then you're looking. Give me one second, I'm trying to look at this. Okay, so Mr. Montenegro, you also have an out on bond case that's in front of me today. You um, are out on bond for a petty theft. Where you were arrested back in September of this year. Um, so I'm looking, the state's looking right now to see if we could potentially have you resolve both of those cases today if you were interested. Would you want to, if they have the, all the information that they need, would you be wanting to resolve both of your cases today? Say yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, just, so just give us a minute, she's gonna look and see. Um, on the 19M7414, I'll do a concurrent credit time, sir. There is cost of investigation of $54 and 36 cents, give me another second, I'll look for the agency. And it looks like restitution, $8.98 to the Circle K. Um, the Circle K is located at 801 South Cimarron Boulevard, Orlando, Florida, 32807. And OPD, OPD. Is, a, okay. OPD is the cost of investigation. I just want to check one more place for make sure there's no more restitution. Okay. So, Mr. Montenegro, in, um, to resolve the case, both cases today, you would be adjudicated guilty as to, to both charges, sentenced to two days. two days on each case, which will run concurrent, so you'll be released today. You will have to pay the cost of investigation to the Orlando Police Department in the amount of $54.36, along with restitution to the Circle K, and we're going to confirm the amount. Did you want to accept the offer and resolve your cases this morning? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll need you to sign the plea form, please. Sorry, Your Honors. It's 898, that's correct. 898? 898. Okay. It's a four loco and a turkey and ham sandwich. Okay. Mr. Montenegro, did you read the plea form, sir, before you signed it? Uh, yes, I did. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, I don't. No questions? Sir, are you on probation? Not that I know. Okay. Do you have reason to believe you would be? No. Okay. Do you understand if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Okay. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. All right. I will accept your plea on both cases, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for two days' time served. Those are to run concurrent to one another. In 19MM7414, um, in addition to your court costs, you have to pay cost of investigation to the Orlando Police Department of $54.36, along with restitution to the Circle K of $8.98. You have court costs on both cases, which are going to be due by October 8th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Thank you. Sir, good morning, your name? Uh, Richard Allen Frederick Allspeck, your honor. Sir, this is 18 CF 17493. You failed to appear for pretrial conference on July 23rd of this year. Your bond is set at none. I'll appoint the public defender if they were not previously appointed and you'll have to have them file a bond motion for you, sir, with the trial judge. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, your honor. Good morning, your name? Sadiqa Broomfield. Ms. Broomfield, you're here in 19 CF 14116. You were arrested for grand theft, third degree of a motor vehicle, possession of cocaine, and possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is 2,500. Your bond on count two is 150. Your bond on count three is $100. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Ada Davis, ma'am. Ms. Davis, this is 19 CF 14107. You were arrested for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, battery, and trespass on property after warning. There is probable cause for the offenses. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. 
Your bond on count one is 3,500. Your bond on count two is 100. Count three is 100. You're not to return to the host in or have any contact with James Sue, and you are not to possess any weapons or any firearms, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Tiffany Hall. Ms. Hall, you're here in 19 CF. 14112, you were arrested for possession of cocaine. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you in both of your cases. Your bond is $500, and then you also fail to appear in 19 CF 2950 um, for pretrial conference on September 10th of 2019. Your bond in that matter is set at none. You'll have to have your attorney file a bond motion with the trial judge. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Betty Ray Hopwood. Sir, this is 18 CF 14865. The state of Florida has filed a one count information against you for arson second degree of a vehicle. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is going to be $5,000. Your bond on count two is going to be $150. Thank you. Thank you. That was the only case, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, do we need to do anything with that? Because there's a there's an information that's filed. So, but do you need a second? I was just looking at the. So the ROR's account, the non-filed account. Or the, yes. Then 5, on the that's ROR's. correct. All right. So, Mr. Hopwood, your bond is five thousand dollars because the state only filed on one of the charges. So, although it appears you have two, you'll be ROR'd on the second charge. The obstruction. They did not file on that. They just filed on the arson. Okay. You've been formally charged by information, and you will probably have an arraignment sometime soon in the trial court on the arson charge. Any, any date? I don't have that for you. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. How can I find out that date? Um, I would contact your lawyer. Good morning, your name? Charles Horton. Mr. Horton, you were here in 19 CF 13671. You were arrested for three counts of a uh, grand theft third degree motor vehicle pursuant to a probable cause warrant. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to return to Prince Contracting at 7600 South Kirkman Road. Your bond on count one is $1,000. Your bond on count two is 250. Your bond on count three is 250. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? My name is uh, Richard Kirschman. Sir, you're here in 19 CF 14090. You were arrested for sale and delivery of cannabis with consideration and possession of cannabis less than 20 grams pursuant to a probable cause warrant. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is uh, 1,500. Your bond on count two is 100. Sir, good morning. Your name? Samuel McLeod. Mr. McLeod, you have two cases this morning. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you on both. 
In 19 CF 14115, you were arrested for possession of methamphetamine. There is probable cause for that offense, sir. Your bond is going to be $150. And in 19 CF 14118, you were arrested for use of an anti-shoplifting device and conspiracy to commit petty theft. There is probable cause for both of those offenses. Your bond on count one is going to be $500. Your bond on count two is $100. You're not to return to the Walmart at 2500 South Kirkman Road. Thank you, sir. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, this is 19 CF 14120. Uh, good morning, your name? Uh, Darren Powell. Mr. Powell, you um, were arrested for arson of a dwelling. You're represented by the public defender. Go, go ahead, Ms. Haney. So um, just looking at the four corners of the affidavit, um, my challenge to this was um, that it, they put an arson of the dwelling. Mm -hmm. um, however, there was no damage to the structure. Um, it appears that there was personal items that was being burned. Um, just based on that, I believe that the lesser included criminal mischief is more appropriate for the charge. All right, so I read the statute this morning, and it looks like there was just maybe a Scrivener's error in the subsection, subsection in which they charge, because they, they, the officer put 1A, but it's, if you read 806.01 sub B, it's any structure or the contents thereof. Okay. So it's- Just think with, disagree, Your Honor. If you look at 1A, it says any dwelling, whether occupied or not, or its contents. Oh, it does. So I would say, that's why I was pointing out to the defense earlier, was that it says in the contents even under 1A. Well. Right. So, yes. Ms. Haley, in this factual situation, it was all of the contents that were put in the bathtub and then yes. set on fire in the bathtub. Okay. May I have a moment? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. So, Mr. Powell, do you live at 638 Stonebridge Drive? Uh, 662 Stonebridge. Okay, so you have no reason to be at 638. No, my wife would go there if we had like an argument or so, that's where she would go with her mom. You can't go back there. You may not return to 638 Stonebridge. Oh, okay, no, no problem. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna order you're not having to any contact with Alicia Powell. Alicia, yep. You're not to possess any weapons or any firearms or any uh, accelerants? Yes, ma'am. Your bond is a thousand dollars. Oh yes. Oh, on. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, good morning. Your name? Robert Ramos. All right. Good morning, Mr. Ramos. This is good 19 CF 14106. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Your Honor. Alyssa Flood on behalf of Mr. Ramos. Okay. Mr. Ramos, you were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for three counts of sexual, sexual battery on a child under the age of 12. Uh, State, did you want to be heard with respect to bond? Yes, Your Honor. We believe the defendant should be held at no bond based on proof, evident presumption, rape. Looking at the four corners of the affidavit by Detective Wesley Avant, um, the victim is, I believe, 30 years old at today's date. Um, at the time, she said it happened between, started when she was seven or eight years old. Um, she just, between 1998 and 1999, 
living in a residence here, her grandmother's residence here in Orlando. Um, the victim, she had been diagnosed with cerebral palsy and has problems with her mobility. Um, the defendant started by fingering her and touching her underneath her clothing. Um, he performed oral sex on the victim. This is pri prior to her turning, I believe, 12 years old. Um, she stated that he robbed her of her innocence. Um, I believe when she got to be 14 years old, then he penetrated her with his penis. Um, but prior to that, um, he was touching her. He had used a pink dildo of some sort. There were pictures, she said, prior to her turning, um, I, think, I think 13 years old, then she was taking pictures of her in nude or wearing very little clothing. He had taken her to adult video stores. He was a neighbor that was helping her disabled grandmother. So he was allowed at the house every day. Um, there was a controlled phone call conducted with the defendant um, by the victim, and uh, she asked, why did you molest me? Um, he says, I don't, it's inaudible. He then responds, I don't know why, all I have is love. I've loved you always. Um, and he said she was an extremely amazing person. He never denied the allegations that the victim was saying or how he touched her. Um, and based on that information, or we believe that she should be held with no bond, no contact with the victim, no contact with the victim's family, no return to the victim or her family member's residence, no weapons, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol. Surrender a passport within 24 hours if he is released, if he has one. Ms. Fly. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Um, and understanding what the complaining witness and her narrative is, um, we can test almost the entirety of that narrative. Um, according to my client, anything that may have taken place took place when the complaining witness was at least 16 years of age or older. Um, at this time, obviously, we don't have a ton of evidence collected to combat the complaining witness's narrative. Um, however, like I said, according to my client, she was a minimum of 16 if anything ever did happen. Understanding that the um, control call took place and that my client didn't outright deny the allegations, I think an apology is not the same as an admission. Um, he does deny the claims that she's making at this point. He has no priors, <clears throat> excuse me, he has family members that live here in the community. Um, he has a job, he's lived here for quite some time. He's had no contact with her for quite some time and would obviously maintain that should he be released at this time. Um, he does have a passport. He would surrender that right away and comply with any other conditions that the state would require at this point. Okay. So based on the information that's been presented in court today contained within the probable cause affidavit, I do find that there is proof evident or presumption great based upon that information, including what's um, in the controlled phone call. I understand what you've presented, um, Ms. Flood, um, and what you may want to present to a court later. Um, so I can... I, you can either, so at this time, I'm not sure if I would exercise discretion to set a bond for him. I don't know if there's enough information presented in order to do that. You're certainly able to proceed if you want to with the second part of the bond hearing, or I can leave it at no bond and you can have a full hearing in the trial division where you might have more time to gather everything that you need, knowing that you only get to have one sure. of the Arthur hearings. Sure, yes, Your Honor, and I think we'll probably wait to um, proceed with that in the trial court. Okay, so at this time, based upon the information that is contained in the probable cause affidavit, I do find that there is proof evident or presumption great. I'm not gonna exercise discretion to set a bond, but nothing has been presented, so that right to have the second prong of the Arthur hearing is preserved. Um, bond will remain at none as to each count. Um, and then, sir, you're not to have any contact with the alleged victim. You're not to have any contact with any children under the age of 18. Um, if and when you do obtain a bond, you are to surrender your passport um, within 24 hours of your release. Okay. Anything else? Uh, nothing at this time, Your Honor. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, your name? Tamika Smith. Ms. Smith, you're here at 19 CF 3231. You failed to appear for a status hearing on October 3rd of this year. Your bond, ma'am, is set at none. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you if they weren't previously appointed. Your mm -hmm. Honor, yes. um, it appears that she was actually here on that date in initial appearance, um, on that date. 
Um, with that being said, we was just wondering if you could exercise some discretion today and set a bond on that failure to appear. I can, so I don't really have the authority to modify the KPS. It's okay. Judge Young's case. I can email him. Again, I don't know if he would, if he would find it a willful failure to appear if she was in the jail being arrested on a new case. Um, I'm happy to email him and ask him if he would be okay setting a bond. Okay. Um, and I don't know what she was here for either. Right. So. Um, it was actually the charges that's on the face sheet, the two at the top. The possession of cocaine, possession of drug paraphernalia. Okay. All right. I will email Judge Young, ma'am, and let him know that you're here and what the circumstances were. Um, maybe we'll have an answer by second session. Can we just keep her up here, Dexter? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. All right, ma'am. We'll Thank call you back after lunch to see if I've heard from Judge Young, okay? Ms. Stature is medical. Medical. Okay, we'll reset her for 24 hours after she's released from medical. Sir, good morning. Your name? Nathan Wood. Mr. Wood, you're here in 19 CF 14100. You were arrested for possession of fentanyl and possession of drug paraphernalia, along with petty theft. There is probable cause for those offenses. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you on both your cases. You also have 19 CF 14101, where you were arrested for attempted burglary of a conveyance. There is probable cause for that offense as well, sir. Your bond on count one in 19 CF 14100 was $1,000. Your bond on count two is 100. Your bond on count three is 100. And in 19 CF 141. Zero one, your bond will be five hundred dollars. You're not to return to the Walmart at one one two five zero East Colonial Drive. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Yao Chen. Mr. Chen, this is 19MO1699. You were arrested for disorderly conduct. There's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Was there an offer for Mr. Chen? Yes, your honor. An adjudication guilt, credit for time served. May I have a moment? Sure. Mr. Chen it will accept the offer and plead no contest. All right. Mr. Chen, did you read the plea form before you signed it, sir? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. All right, sir, I will accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail. You have credit for two days' time served. You also have to pay court costs, which are due by October 8th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Yes, ma'am. Right, thank thank you. you. Good morning, your name? Uh, Joshua Barnes. Mr. Barnes, you're here in 19MM8220. You were arrested for trespass on property after warning. There is probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Was there an offer for Mr. Barnes? Yes, Your Honor. Withhold credit time serve and no return. You want to accept the offer, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I just need you to sign the plea form. Mr. Barnes, did you read the plea form before you signed it? I know they give it to you in the back. Uh, yes, ma'am. You did? Okay. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? Uh, no. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. 
Do you understand that if you are not a U.S. citizen, that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court no, today? No, ma'am. All right. I will accept your plea, withhold adjudication, sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail. You have credit for two days' time served. So you can't go back to the wing stop at 2911 East Colonial Drive. You'll have to pay court costs. Those are due by October 8th of 2020. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Um, Colin Hamilton. You were arrested in 19MM8223 for battery and resisting officer without violence. There's probable cause for both of those offenses. Were you going to hire a lawyer to help you with this case, or do you want to see if you qualify for the public defender? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't spoken to anybody about it. But Have you talked to your parents? Um, I've talked to my mom, but it was only about bail. I haven't talked to her about any uh, legal Okay. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent okay. you now, and if you end up hiring a lawyer, they can file a motion to substitute counsel, okay? Okay. Thank you. Um, so right now I'm going to order that you are not to have any contact with Dylan Gioacchini um, or his mother, and then you're to comply with any of the um, outcomes that the school has determined is appropriate. I don't know if you're allowed to go back to school or if you are suspended or, or what exactly happened or what they're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna also place you on pretrial release. You're gonna check in every week with the pretrial release officer. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or illegal substances and you'll be randomly tested for that. Okay. And I believe that's all. Okay, thank all right, you Thank you. Good morning, your name? Chris Thayer Johnson. Ms. Johnson? Yes, ma'am. All right, you're here in 19MM8218. You were arrested for trespass into conveyance and possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender. Was there an offer for Ms. Johnson? No, you're not. Okay. Bond on count one is 1,000, bond on count two is 1,000. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Your name? Tommy Dossie. Tommy Dossie? Sir, you're here uh, for an out of county violation of probation. There is probable cause, sir. Your bond is going to be set at none. Indian River County will come pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get to first appearance there. Thank you, sir. Oh, Mr. Dossi, yes, when you are released from the jail, you do have reporting requirements. Don't, don't what? You have reporting requirements. 
you need to make sure that you check in with the sheriff's office when you're released from the jail. You understand what I'm telling you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Your name? Nathan Johnson. How about um, Miss Francis? Did she bond? And you're Mr. Johnson? Yes. All right, Mr. Johnson, you're here for an out of county warrant from Osceola County related to possession of a controlled substance without a prescription and possession of drug paraphernalia. Your bond uh, is 1500 on count one and 100 on count two. You also have another out of county warrant for burglary of a conveyance, grand theft, dealing in stolen property, <coughs> and providing false information to a pawnbroker. Bond on count one is 5,000, count two, 1,000, count three, 500, count four, 500, count five, 500. <coughs> and then, it's the same one. Um, if you're unable to post that bond, Sir Osceola County is going to come and pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. Good morning, ma'am, your name? Deja King. Ms. King, you are here for an out-of-county warrant out of Sarasota County related to violation of probation for fraudulent use of personal identification information. Your bond is set at none. Sarasota County is going to come and pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get there. All right, thank you. Sir, good morning. Your name? Albert Ott. Mr. Ott, you are here for an out-of-county warrant out of Osceola County for violation of probation related to receiving money from a pawnbroker by false verification and dealing in stolen property. Your bond on count one is 1,000. Your bond on count two is 2,500. If you are unable to post that bond, sir, Osceola County will come and pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get there. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Sir, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Your name? Rasheem Stewart. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stewart, you are here, sir, for an out-of-county warrant from Charlotte County for a violation of probation. It's alleged that you access the internet, which is against instructions of your probation conditions. In case number Charlotte County 1029F. There's probable cause, sir. Your bond is going to be set at none. Charlotte County will come pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get to first appearance there. Yes, ma'am. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, sir. Um, you have reporting requirements when you're released from the jail in Charlotte County. I'm sorry, I think you have reporting requirements. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is 19MM8180. Mr. Services was arrested for trespass in a structure. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender. He's not to return to the Circle K. His bond is $250. I'm not going to take any action on his out on bond cases or case. Can We will reset Mr. Toll. Um, Ms. Fowler, I am going to appoint your office in Mr. Toll's case. I can do his initial appearance if you want me to. That way when he's released from medical, he doesn't have a hold. Yes, Your Honor, we could waive the appearance. Okay. So. 
That's case number 19 CF 14063. He was arrested for burglary of a dwelling. There is probable cause. I'm appointing the public defender to represent him. He's not to return to 1598 Michigan Avenue. He's not to have any contact with his co-defendant Thomas Agnew. And his bond is $5,000. Good morning. Tell me your name, please. Uh, this arrest is Erica Dumpson, but legally is Erica Robinson. Hey, no have any objection to releasing her on her own recognizance with some conditions but I'm not going to sign the order that was provided to me if you want to provide me with a new order which is basically an ROR order with the conditions of release that doesn't have any language regarding Florida statute 916 or the competency of procedure rules because I'm not going to find her incompetent to proceed based upon the information that was filed oh, but I do think that given all the circumstances that um, ROR would be appropriate subject to some conditions, but the trial division can determine later on what they want to do regarding the competency. Okay. So if you want to provide that order to my chambers after you, you know, send a copy to the state, I'll sign that today. Okay, Your Honor. Okay. Actually, before I, we let um, Ms. Thompson go. I want to explain that to her. So, um, I'm sorry, ma'am. Is it Robertson or Dumpson? It's Robertson legally. But okay. He just used my ex, um, my maid, not my maiden, but. My marriage name, I would say Dumpson. I was married under Dumpson, but legally in the last uh, two to three years, I went back to Robinson, which is my maiden name. Okay, so Ms. Robertson, I'm going to grant your motion today um, to release you from the jail. And okay. your attorney's gonna provide me an order. It's gonna have the following conditions in it. You're gonna participate in any mel mental health treatment through Aspire. Okay. Um, as recommended. Um, if they recommend the competency restoration program through Aspire and you're accepted, you're to uh, participate in that as well. You're not okay. to drink alcohol or use illegal substances of any kind. You're not to possess any firearms or other weapons. And you're to main co maintain contact with your attorney. Okay. okay. Why, why not? Why I can't drink alcohol? Um, because I think it probably will not keep your mind clear and it won't help you to learn the things that you need to learn to be able to proceed with your cases. Um, All right. Do I have to take it? Take what? Uh, what you're offering as far as not drinking alcohol. You can stay right here. I mean, that's part of the order from Judge Johnson's conditional release order as well. So she's already been ordered to, to do that. But she can stay here. That's fine.
I don't know. I don't think my enemy should be on my face. I don't know if that's what we do it like that. Ms. Robertson, are you going to comply with the order or not? Ma'am, um, are you going to comply with the order or not? Can I have a not? copy of it as well? well? Of course you can have a copy. I'm asking if you're going to comply with it. Okay. Is that how yet? Long, how long I got to comply with it? Until your case is resolved. You're not making me feel very confident about your compliance. I'm thinking about just denying the motion. Um, if you violate it, you come back here and I'm not gonna release you again. Okay, if she might end me, I probably shouldn't take it, but. All right, I'm just gonna deny the motion, Ms. Fowler. You can refile it. Thank you. All right. Determination of counsel um, case. Jaxley Delesis. Okay. All right. Well, this. Is there already given order already? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent that person. Your Honor, are you appointing the PD? Okay. And then I believe just 33 days? Yes, sure. Yes. CF12412 Rollins Robinson. She granted the state file notice of non filing for the 33rd day. That'll be good. 19CF10370 Carlos Navarro. She granted the state file notice of non filing for the 33rd day. Yeah, I don't see anything either as to why. All right. Um, that'll be granted. Um, 19MM7221, Joseph Wren. She granted the St. Fathers of non filing for a 33rd day. That'll be granted. 19MM7311, Jermaine Jones. That should be denied the St. Fathers information on 10-7. 
that'll be denied. 19 MM 7352 Cornelius Brodus. That should be denied. The state filed information on 10 7. That'll be denied. 19 MM 7318 Adadis Garcia. That should be granted. The state filed a notice of non filing before the 33rd day. That'll be granted. 19 CF 12631 Julio Romero. That should be granted the state file notice of non filing for the 33rd day. That'll be granted. 19 CF 12500 Keith Blackman. That should be granted the state file notice of non filing for the 33rd day. That'll be granted. 19 CF 12385 Angel Santiago. That should be granted the state file notice of non filing for the 33rd day. 19 CF 11992 Albert Marone. That should be denied the state filed information on 10-7. That'll be denied. 19 CF 12502 Robert Gillum. That should be denied the state filed information and a request to transfer from felony to misdemeanor was clocked in this morning. That'll be denied. 19 CF 10532 Brandon Walker. That should be granted the state file notice of non-filing for the 33rd day. 19 CF 12315 Willie Johnson. That should be granted the state file notes of non filing for the 33rd day. And that'll be granted. Right. And then we will be in recess. Good morning, I'm Judge Amy Carter. This is courtroom one, session two. Could I have the attorneys place their appearances on the record, please? Kathy Kennedy Swanson on behalf of the Office of State Attorney. Thank you. Lakeisha Halen, Office of the Public Defender. Thank you. One moment, Your Honor. Sure. We need to do her first, or? Uh, no, she's speaking with the oh. spout right now. Okay, thank you. Can we pass by Mr. DeVilla? Sure. Sir, 
Ernest. Good morning, inside. your name? Uh, Darius Ernest. Sir, you were here in 19 CF 11953. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for carjacking and tampering with the witness to hinder communication to law enforcement. I will appoint the public defender. Actually, you did fill out the affidavit, sir. Were you going to hire a lawyer, or do you want to see if you qualify for the public defender? Um, I was going to hire a public defender. Well, you don't have to hire a public defender. Well, They're appointed yeah. based upon um, need and ability to pay. Yeah. So do you want to see if you qualify? Yes. Are you working? Not at the moment. All right. Do you have any source of income? Um, right now, my mom... Okay, so based upon your testimony, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with Olivia Scott. You're not to return to the scene of the offense. You're not to possess any weapons or any firearms. Your bond on count one is $7,500. Your bond on count two is $150. Your name? Patrick Hafford. Mr. Hafford, this is 19 CF 14124. You were arrested for burglary of an occupied dwelling, burglary of a conveyance, petty theft, and sanitary nuisance. There is probable cause for the offenses. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not to return to 3918 Lake Mira Drive or the Cove at Lake Mira uh, neighborhood. You're not to have any contact with Scott Simon or Jennifer Simon. Your bond on count one is 5,000. Your bond on count two is 3,500. Your bond on count three is 100. Your bond on count four is 100. Thank you, sir. Stephen Joseph Romano. Mr. Romano, this is 19 CF 13507. You were arrested for two counts of receiving money from a pawnbroker by false verification and grand theft third degree two counts. Yes, ma'am. This was pursuant to a probable cause warrant. I will uh, appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is $2,000. Your, your bond on count one is $2,000. Your bond on count two is 150. Your bond on count three is 1,000 and your bond on count four is 150. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Sure. Your Honor, can I put myself on the record? Yes. Leticia followed up the Office of Public Defender. Thank you, Ms. This is case number 19MM8183. Did you have an opportunity to speak with your lawyer? Yes. Okay. And how would you like to proceed this morning? Would you like to accept a plea, enter a um, plea of no contest? Okay. And what was the offer again? Adjudication of guilt, credit time served, and no return. form before you signed it, ma'am? I, I listened to my lawyer. I am blind in my left eye. Okay. So she, did she review the plea form with you? Well, she said, yeah, that if I plead today that I would be done with my case and let me go. I will never go back to the airport, I promise. Okay. Ms. Fallon, did you review the plea form with her? No, Your Honor. I can review, briefly review it with her. Sure. Go ahead.
Ms. Lafrance, did you have any questions about anything that your lawyer explained to you on the plea form? No, um, I'm never going back to the airport again. Um, I guess I'll deal with buses. I do have one family member um, in Sarasota, but in the future, I'll call the police if I ever come. I don't plan on it real soon, maybe in two years. Okay. If I have to, like, uh, we could call the police. They do have my pocketbook. Do you know if they brought my bag back to the airport, back to the court? I don't know, but I would think when you're released, whatever property they have of yours, they will release that with you. Okay, okay. I don't have to come back to court for that. No, ma'am, you do not. All right, thank you. Okay. Yes, Ms. LaFrance, I'm going to accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail. You've, you've got credit for three days' Thank time you. served. Okay. Ms. LaFrance, you're going to have to pay court costs. They're going to be due by October 8th of 2020. If you don't pay your court costs, though, ma'am, they will suspend your driver's license. Okay. If you have a driver's license. So make sure that you pay the court costs, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Jason Lovett, bonded, Your Honor. Okay. Did we, sir, good afternoon, or er, good morning, your name? Richard Simpson. Mr. Simpson, okay. How about um, Jean Fenlon? Um, Inmate number? Yes, 1902-9426. Bonded. Bonded. All right, Mr. Simpson. You, sir, are here in 19 CT 7393. You were arrested for driving while license suspended. There's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your Honor. Yes. Um, the state has no objection to releasing him on his own recognizances. I'm not going to do that because okay. he's on probation. Okay. He was just placed on probation in January. Bond is five hundred dollars. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Your name? Hello. Tell me your name, please. O'Neill Hall. Henry Brown is our award guard. Okay. James Crow, bonded. Thank you. And you're Mr. Hall? Yes. All right, sir. This is 19MM8227. You were arrested for resisting officer without violence and wearing a hood or mask on the street. There is probable cause. Was there an offer for Mr. Hall? No, yeah. Okay. Mr. Hall, I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Your bond on count one is 500. Your bond on count two is 100. Thank you, sir. Oh, you also can't return to the scene. I think the 7-Eleven, is it a 7-Eleven? No, Walgreens. Mr. Hall, you can't go back to the Walgreens. Where you were arrested. Okay. Thank you, sir. Nikki Hansen is mental health. Okay. We will reset that one. 
Sir, your name? Lamar. Mr. Lamar, you're here in 19MM8230. You were arrested for trespass on property after warning. There's probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender. Is there an offer for Mr. Lamar? Yes, Your Honor. Adjudication of guilt, credit time served, and no return. All right. Mr. Lamar, were you accepting the offer? Yes, ma'am. All right. Sign the plea form, please. Mr. Lamar, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand that if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? No. You understand? Are you a U.S. citizen, no. sir? Okay. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. All right. I will accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in the Orange, or one day in the Orange County Jail. You have credit for one day time served. You do have to pay court costs, which are due by October 8th of 2020. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Christian Lopez, Your Honor. Mr. Lopez, this is case number 19MM8233. You were arrested for trespass on property after warning. There is probable cause. Was there an offer for Mr. Lopez? Yes, Your Honor. Adjudication of guilt, credit time served, no return. All right. And I will appoint the public defender to represent you, sir. Did you want to accept that offer? Uh, excuse me, Your Honor? Did you want to accept the offer? Yes. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Sign the plea form, please. All right. Appreciate it. Mr. Lopez, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up today? No, ma'am. Uh, Your Honor, I'm just ready to go home. Okay. Um, are you on probation? No. Do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? I understand. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, Your Honor. All right. I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to... One day in the Orange County Jail, you have credit for one day time served. You're also going to have to pay court costs, which are due by October 8th of 2020. You can't return to uh, the Orlando Regional Medical Center. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Your name? Michael Simmons. Mr. Simmons, you are here in 19MM8234. You were arrested for battery, disorderly conduct at a public establishment, and trespass on property after warning. There is probable cause. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Um, was there an Well, I don't think there's an offer to battery. So, Mr. Simmons, you are not to return to, to Delmonico's Italian Steakhouse. You're not to have any contact with Heriberto Roman. And you're not to possess any weapons or any firearms. Your bond on count one is $500. Your bond on count two is 100 and your bond on count three is 100 Thank you, sir. Thank you. My wife's already... Morning, ma'am. Are you Miss Cruz? Good Miss Cruz, you're here for an out of county warrant from Seminole County related to dealing in stolen property. There is no bond on the warrant. Seminole County is going to come pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get to first appearance. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Miss right. Smith, this is a recall from this morning. Miss Smith, at this time I spoke to Judge Young and he indicated that 
you your status was because she, you're on the competency docket and you had an eval scheduled for October 3rd. I don't know the status of that evaluation and Judge Young was not aware, so um, he'd prefer that your office file a motion to get everything scheduled back on track. So okay. I'm, I'm not gonna modify the KPS at this time. Thank okay, you. thank you. Oh, okay. Morning, your name? Lord Davila. Mr. Davila, you are here in 19 CF 14125. You were arrested for possession of cannabis with intent to sell or deliver and possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. Um, at this time, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. You need to make sure you stay in contact with your lawyer's office so that you have notice of your next court date. So I'm, re I'm released. You're going to be released, okay. Mr. Deville. Where where were you um, where are you from? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. I just wondered because I saw on your face sheet it said that you had worked at Shoprite, and that's a chain of grocery. I'm from Michigan, so that's a chain of grocery stores up north. So I just wondered where where you were from. Thank you. All right. So make sure you stay in contact with your lawyer, um, and don't miss court. Otherwise, a no bond warrant will be issued for your arrest, sir. Okay. Thank you. Do we have anything else? No? Okay, then we'll be in recess. Nice